excuse me. Chapter 11. Later they all gathered at the North Alder camp for dinner. A lovely fire burned and the atmosphere was cheerful. Everyone enjoyed the peaceful time together eating and chatting. The mood, the mood was high and as they all believed that Elsa's presence and the fact that she had been born with magic meant they would soon be out of the enchanted forest. She had to be the one who could free them after all these years. They had been, they had been trapped. Even Yolanda and Matthias managed to avoid bickering with each other. Olaf played with a group of North, Al North Aldra toddlers. They surrounded him, having a blast pulling, chewing on, and rearranging his parts. Hey, let me ask you, said Olaf happily. How do you guys cope with the ever-increasing complexity of thoughts that comes with mich One of the kids grabbed Olaf's carrot nose off his face and stuck it straight up his own nose. They all cracked up. Brilliant! Olaf explained above the laughter. It is so refreshing to get to talk to folks my own age, he added. Some of the children sucked on Olaf's feet, enjoying the feeling of cold snow on their gums. No, 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 don't do that, said Olaf, trying to pull away. You don't know what I've stepped in. <laughs> Anna stood with Matthias having a bowl of stew under the starless night. Being in the magical forest where the mist blocked out the sky seemed odd to her, but she noticed how bits of moonlight managed to break through, shining down. It gave pieces of the forest a beautiful blue and silvery glow. Anna enjoyed talking to Matthias about her father and Arendelle. While they chatted, Matthias kept a watchful eye on their surroundings, constantly on guard. He had been a soldier for so many years that it came naturally to him. Plus, he had lived in the enchanted forest long enough to know that unexpected things often happen. Although, meeting new people, one who was magical and one who was a talking snowman was the most unexpected thing that had ever happened either in the enchanted forest or outside of it. He was about your height, said Anna. That all, huh? Said Matthias, trying to imagine the young prince as an adult. You meant a lot to him. A smile crossed her face as she continued. Whenever we'd get buttered biscuits from... Blackett's bakery, he'd say, Lieutenant Matthias could never get enough of these. <laughs> she laughed at the memory. It's the butter, said Matthias, closing his eyes briefly, recalling the taste of the delicious biscuits melting in his mouth. Then he glanced over at Anna. Hey, tell me, is Emilla still over at Hudson's Earth? She is answered Anna. Really? She married? He asked. Anna shook her head. No. Oh, well, he said, wearing a slightly sad expression. Why doesn't that make me feel better? What else do you miss? asked Anna. Even though they had gone, had been gone only a few days, she was missing Arendelle, too. It comfort, comfort, it comforted comforted her to talk about it. My father, Matthias said, looking out into the distance. He passed long ago before all this. He was a great man, built us a good life in Arendelle, but taught me to never take the good for granted. He cleared his throat and imitated his father's voice as he continued. He'd say, be prepared. Just when you think you've found your way, life will throw you onto a new path. What do you do when it does? Asked Anna. Don't give up. Take it one step at a time. And he began. 
Just do the next right thing. Anna interrupted. Matthias nodded. Yeah, you got it. Anna smiled. She glanced up when Elsa walked by, talking to her, talking with Honey Marin, Honey, Honey Marin. The campfire crackled and popped as Honey Marin and Elsa sat near its warm glow. Tell me about the voice. Honey Marin said as she petted a baby reindeer that had wandered off looking for attention. What makes you so sure they have the answers? Because they speak to a part of me that no one has ever been able to reach. Elsa responded, holding her hand out for the reindeer to sniff. Honey Marin looked so intrigued. What part is that? she asked. The part of me that's magic, Elsa said. Honey Marin thought for a moment. I want to show you something, may I? Elsa nodded and Honey Marin held up the section of Elsa and Anna's mother's scarf and pointed to the snowflakes that decorated it. She showed her the symbols on the points of the snowflakes, you know, air, fire, water, earth, she said, and then brought Elsa's attention to a diamond in the center that connected them all. But look, there's a fifth spirit, and said to be a bridge between us, and the magic of nature. A fifth spirit? asked Elsa, intrigued. Some say that they heard a call out the day the forest fell. Elsa's eyes lit up. Do you think that's who's calling me? Maybe. Alas, only Atahala knows, said Honey Marin. Atahala, Elsa said with a small smile. She could remember her mother saying the same thing when she and Anna were children, asking hundreds of question, questions. Only Atahala knows. Their mother sang a lullaby about Atahala as she tucked them into their beds at night. Supposedly, it was a mysterious river that had all the answers to the questions about the past. As a child, Elsa had wished she could find the river to seek out the answers to her questions. For as long as she could remember, she had wanted to learn more about herself and her magic. Why did she have magical powers? Were there others like her out there? And if there were, would she ever meet any of them? In that moment, she realized it was strange, but being in the enchanted forest made her feel like she was closer to getting some of those answers. Elsa held the scarf to her chest, hugging it close. She could almost hear her mother singing the soothe, soothing tune. She began to sing it, and Honey Marion smiled as she sang along with her. She was so surprised that Elsa knew it. Why do lullabies always have to have some terrible warning in them? asked Honey Marion. I wonder that all the time. Elsa said with a chuckle. A distant boom suddenly cut through their laughter, sending a shiver right through Elsa. What was that? She asked Honey Marion. Boom, boom, boom. The ground beneath them vibrated angrily with each noise. Honey Marion's face fell. Earth giants, she said, quickly rising to her feet.